All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another character spotlight. The character spotlight that we're going to be doing tonight is Purge, my Jedi Sentinel, who currently is combat spec. Now, of course, as you can see from my buffs, this uh, the numbers that I'm going to be showing you on my character screen are with full buffs and my stim, which, I mean, Purge is biochem, so he has this beautiful reusable might stim that is absolutely fantastic and still one of the main reasons why I like having biochem on my characters because buying these things over and over again is a big hassle sometimes I forget to do it I go into a war zone and I just don't have it but um, we'll go ahead and move first uh, start off with the character sheet now basically everything on his bar with the exception of Blade Storm, Force Stasis, and Force Sweep, which I don't use Force Sweep very often. It's kind of more of a uh, utility skill for me because there are some times when you cannot do white damage to somebody. And, uh, he's pretty much 90% white damage, which is your basic melee attack. And so I'm not going to go too much into the force I'll go ahead and show you that though I mean 110 crit chance of 30 nice big surge because it used to be smash a decent amount of bonus damage um, main things on the stats because a lot of guys were asking me what my focus is gonna be whenever I actually go to min max a character so crit chance I'd like to have about in the 30 35 range somewhere in there um, I'm kinda actually thinking of aiming lower and just still keeping a lot of my surge and my bonus damage from power but one thing that is really important is I wanna get keep my accuracy at about 99 to 100 I actually prefer to have 100 maybe even slightly above because again accuracy over 100 percent reduces the targets defense as you can see there so I mean every bit that I have over 100 percent accuracy is giving me armor penetration which is fantastic for white damage attacks especially against tanks because Going up against a tank, I really can't do a whole lot of damage because just they have so many abilities that mitigate the white damage. But on any kind of DPS type character, he's very capable of just burning things down really quick and has a lot of tools. I mean, the crippling throw becomes a root, as well as just being a great ability. I mean, 15 seconds, the target receives 20% less healing. This is really nice when you're going after, you know, caster type characters. And considering the cooldown is 12 seconds, you can just keep that on them. And roots do not affect resolve, so you don't have to worry about, oh, they're white barred, so they're not going to be rooted for two or three seconds. I forget what it is. We'll actually look at the ability in a second. We're running through the gear. I did go ahead pick up this uh, foe stomper. It gave me some accuracy and some crit with the Elite War Hero. I'm actually not a big fan of any of the Elite War Hero stuff for um, Warriors. I don't think that it has optimized stats in any way. Um, I actually started stacking quite a bit of critical, and one thing you'll notice, my offhand is still basically War Hero. And what I've decided is I'm not even going to buy the Hilt for my other offhand. I'm just going to get a good mod and a good enhancement for it because uh, the hilt doesn't even take you to 39-39 like the barrels do for other characters like Sublimates. She gets 39-39 plus 50 for her barrel, but um, anybody that has a lightsaber hilt actually receives less stats. So I think that that's kind of ridiculous. It's, it's basically like a plus 3 gain on your strength and endurance combined and it's just not worth spending the almost 3500 ranked comms to get the hilt when I can buy say a helmet or a set of boots and get perfectly usable 63 mod and enhancement for that now again as I spoke a little bit about in uh, the sublimaze video 
there's a lot of work to be done. Basically, your enhancements, you want to look at the bottom two stats of the enhancements. What's your plus two? What secondary? What's your plus two? The other one. You want to just leave the endurance and expertise out of the equation. You want them to be 42, 54. Whatever the combination, whether it's 54 accuracy, 42 power, 42 power, 54 surge, you want those two things to be 42, 54. Because that those are the highest enhancements you can get on those bonus stats. <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm talking a lot here. But, um, mod wise, I still have some modding to do here. You see, I have the plus 40, but I'm missing the enhancement. Um, there, I, I need basically everything. All I have is an enhancement in my chest right now, and I'm I like so many people went for the Weapon Master armor set for my Sentinel when I was first gearing him out. And I can tell you all, this is a mistake. It doesn't matter what spec you are playing. Don't do it. Go for the Vindicator. I know you're sitting there and it's like, oh man, but Guardian Leap heals you for 8% on the 2 set bonus. That does absolutely nothing for me. Ah! But the four set bonus, bonus uh, extra 10% damage for five seconds whenever you leap into somewhere, that's huge. Anytime that you can get a period on your DPS where you do 10% extra damage, that's a big boon. I mean, 10% is quite a bit in you know, terms of adding more damage to your attacks. Again, gloves, same way. I got a decent enhancement on those. Need to upgrade the mod. That'll increase my critical chance, you know, enough. Got good mods on, you know, the belt and the bracers, because, of course, those are the ones you have to buy over and over again to get the good mods. And, you know, search around. I mean, look on other vendors. I know a couple of you have even said that on the Sublimaze video that I did. You said that you couldn't find the proper enhancement for your character. And remember, enhancements do not add anything but endurance, expertise, and your two bonus stats. So, I mean, that right there means you can take it from any armor set that you want and find the you know, stats that your character is looking for. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Purge is not anywhere near completely geared out. He's getting fairly close, but it's still going to take a lot of work, and I would be really surprised if I was able to min-max him by April, when they're saying that the new 2.0 is coming out. Skill tree. Pretty standard combat build. Um, I think the only thing that I, I traded the stagger, which gives me an extra one second immobilization for bonus damage and shorter cooldown on my master strikes. Which again, you're talking, if I go in, hit my precision slash, which is up here. <laughs> it's not here, it's here. <laughs> Jump in, hit my precision slash. That, you know, reduces their armor by 100% for 4.5 seconds, and it does not respect a global cooldown. Jump in, hit that, immediately hit the Master Strikes. After doing the Guardian Leap with the Vindicator set, you're doing 18% total more damage, plus you have 100% armor penetration, plus whatever accuracy you're over from there actually adds into that as well. So you can get quite a bit of armor penetration from that. Now, Master Strikes. takes a, It's a three second channel cast, of course. I'm sure a lot of you know this. And with Precision Slash lasting for 4.5 seconds, what that does is give you the ability to leap in, hit that Precision Slash, or, you know, Zealous Strike first. But you always want to hit the Precision Slash directly before your Master Strike. And there is some differential here because this move is fairly easy to counter I mean anybody with a stun or knockback of course you pretty much just wasted your precision slash but that would happen anyway even if you jumped in and just started you know hitting them with uh, not blade rush yeah it is blade rush 
<laughs> hitting him with the Blade Rush and the Blade Storm. I'm sorry if I uh, misquoted earlier saying that Blade Rush might have been a Force ability. It's not. It's Blade Storm I was thinking of. So I usually do that, jump in, hit my precision slash, get my master strikes going, and then I have just enough time because after the three second channel of the master strike, the global cooldown is already reset, and I have enough time to hit off a blade storm. And thankfully the Ataru, is that what it's called here, Ataru? Yeah, Ataru, strikes will usually proc off of that master strike. I mean, you're hitting three hits, you have an increased chance to be able to uh, do it, yeah, 30% chance to make your next slash blade storm blah 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 hit, and it's like, a, I forget exactly where it's from, if I could check it, no, it doesn't tell me what the actual percentage is. But yeah, I mean, it's a fairly standard build. Like I said, I changed it a little bit to suit my needs better. I think that this build is a little bit more bursty. Plus, getting that three-second root on the Master Strikes it definitely beats the hell out of one second extra on your Force Leap. Because your Force Leap can actually miss. Now, mine really doesn't miss that much because I have the 100% accuracy. But on a character like Oribus, where he has less than 100% accuracy, I actually miss quite a few roots going for my Force Leap and then with the Stagger. Like, it just doesn't take effect because even though I travel the distance, the hit does not take place and therefore the root does not. Um, tactics? Fairly standard, and I mean, I can talk about them, but... When you're in PvP, it's hard to actually know what to hit. I mean, I derp on my defensive cooldowns quite a bit. But um, generally, you're going to want to start off with Rebuke if you're taking damage. Um, if you're taking damage from more than one source, it's probably not bad to activate Saber Ward shortly after. I mean, Rebuke lasts for six seconds. So, I mean, if you, three seconds, you start taking damage from another source, I would go ahead and hit your Saber Ward just to give you that extra survivability and decrease the damage that you're taking. If you're taking damage from a lot of sources and you have, I mean, Force Camouflage, try and save that. I actually meant to uh, look at that. Yeah, because I know a lot of, a lot of you actually um, have called me on using my Force Camouflage you know, before I'm even in combat, and it's because of Fleet Footed. No, it's not because of Fleet Footed. Fleet Footed just removes in movement and pairing effects, which is fantastic in anything but Hutball, but I think it was when I was over in Watchmen. There was an ability. Yeah. Force Fade. That's where I got in the habit of using that before I got into combat, because Force Camouflage would actually increase your movement speed by 20% when you used it. Which was great, because, you know, if you're trying to close a gap really quick, you can go into stealth, move really quickly, and get up there. Which, I have to get myself out of that habit. I played Watchmen so long. But, really, it's good if you're being rooted, just taking a shitload of damage, just Force Camo out, try and pull yourself back to a healer. I mean, especially in a match like Hypergate, you don't want to overextend and get to where the healer has to pull themselves, you know, half to the box in the middle of the arena to be able to heal you, unless you're playing a really derpy team and you're just destroying them. Boop, 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 boop. But um, other than that, I'm not really sure what you guys are looking for. I guess total stats that maybe I would like to get is like I said 30 to 35 percent crit I'd actually be happy with 30 um, I would like to keep my crit multiplier fairly high and just basically stack into bonus damage because I have an ability that procs an automatic crit and that's where a big part of my damage comes from now having that high crit 
definitely useful with Master Strike. Um, or a higher crit, I should say, than what I do have. I'm not going to stack, you know, 40% crit or anything crazy like that. But honestly, something like that even would maybe work with this build. Just because you would have the ability to get that ma massive armor penetration. The only thing is that you would be sacrificing either Surge or Power, but as long as you don't drop below 75% Surge, you're okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could actually get close to about 38 to 40% crit if I dropped my Surge down a little bit. But um, Power, again, always your best friend go to it. Now with the changes in 2.0 it's going to be very difficult to stack because they're talking um, from what I've seen on the stats of the PvP gear uh, they're removing a lot of the power from the gear and adding in more expertise and they're making expertise not have diminishing returns anymore. So like in a fully expertise geared build you're going to do 60% extra damage in a war zone instead of, I think I'm at like 24 right now. Yeah, 24.25. So they're almost tripling the amount of bonus damage you're going to receive from your gear. And I think that's a smart move because basically they're making it so PvP gear is going to be much more viable in PvP and less viable in PvE. And that's how it should be. I'm not a very big pve -er, but I don't think that I should be able to run into just about any operation or hard mode and perform just as well as a guy that has been grinding out his gear in flashpoints, operations, and hard modes. But, um, I'm not really sure what else to talk about in this one, so I'm going to go ahead and call it quits for right now. <laughs> this has been a Character Spotlight on Purge. Purge Darkblaze, Rider of the Maelstrom, my combat sentinel, and I will see you in the next episode.